two Chinese satellites just pulled off something extraordinary 35,786 kilometers above Earth. Shurjin-21 and Shurjin-25 quietly closed in on each other in geostationary orbit. Why? To attempt the first-ever satellite refueling test at that altitude. If successful, this changes everything about how we operate, maintain, and extend the life of space infrastructure. In this video, we'll explore exactly what happened, how it was tracked, and why this silent maneuver could reshape the future of space technology forever. High above Earth, in the vast stillness of geostationary orbit, two Chinese satellites have carried out a maneuver that's raising eyebrows across the global space community. Shurjin-21 and Shurjin-25, two spacecraft developed by the Shanghai Academy of Space Flight Technology, executed what appears to be a carefully orchestrated proximity operation. This isn't just routine satellite movement. It may be the first step toward demonstrating on-orbit refueling at GEO, a capability that could revolutionize satellite longevity. On June 30, 2025, optical surveillance from the Swiss company S2A Systems captured the two spacecraft virtually overlapping at 128 degrees east, making them almost visually indistinguishable from ground-based telescopes. Before this, US-based Comspock, a space situational awareness company, reported that Shurjin-21 and Shurjin-25 had come within one kilometer of each other on June 13. According to Comspock's analysis, there were three possibilities, a successful docking, a rehearsal of docking procedures, or an aborted attempt. By June 16, they were once again over 120 kilometers apart, indicating a separation phase following the encounter. This June 30th maneuver is the second time these two satellites have performed such close coordination in a matter of weeks. That alone signals intent and preparation. But it's not just about movement, it's about purpose. Let's take a quick look at their background. Shurjin-21, launched in October 2021, is best known for towing an inactive Beidou 2G2 navigation satellite into a graveyard orbit, showcasing its ability to handle defunct space assets. Shurjin-25, launched in January 2025, was explicitly designed to test on-orbit refueling and mission extension technologies in geostationary orbit. The significance of doing this in GEO, rather than low Earth orbit, is huge. GEO is home to satellites that power global communications, navigation, weather forecasting, and more. These satellites are costly to replace and difficult to service due to their altitude. Successfully maneuvering, docking, or refueling in GEO isn't just complex, it's cutting edge. When satellites meet in orbit, it's not just a show of control, it's a demonstration of long-term thinking. If China's Shurjin-21 and Shurjin-25 have indeed performed a successful refueling maneuver, they've taken a significant step towards solving one of the biggest challenges in satellite operations, how to make space infrastructure last longer. Let's start with the core issue. Satellites in geostationary orbit are expensive and difficult to replace. Positioned at an altitude of 35,786 kilometers, geo satellites provide vital services like television broadcasting, internet connectivity, GPS corrections, and even climate monitoring. These satellites are designed for long missions, often 15 years or more, but their operational life is limited primarily by fuel. Once they run out, they can't hold their orbital position and must be moved to a graveyard orbit, even if the onboard systems still work perfectly. Now imagine extending those missions by refueling the satellites in place. That's the goal of Shurjin-25. If successful, it could allow existing satellites to operate for years beyond their design lifespan. It could also open the door to a sustainable, cost-effective space environment where spacecraft can be maintained and upgraded without launching replacements. What makes this development especially notable is that on-orbit servicing in GEO is extremely rare. While there have been refueling and life extension tests in low Earth orbit, geostationary orbit poses entirely new challenges. Longer communication delays, higher radiation levels, and greater distances make the task significantly more complex. That's what makes the maneuver between Shurjin-21 and Shurjin-25 so bold. There's also the matter of technical design. The satellites appear to have been built with coordinated servicing in mind. They're both manufactured by the same organization, which likely ensured interface compatibility for fuel transfers or other interactions. This implies long-term planning and a commitment to testing advanced orbital maintenance systems. 
From a global perspective, this test showcases the growing diversity of space capabilities. Multiple nations are developing or exploring on-orbit servicing, including NASA, DARPA, ESA, and commercial providers like Northrop Grumman, which has already docked its MEV mission extension vehicle with a commercial GEO satellite. But no one has confirmed refueling in GEO yet. If Shurjin-25 accomplishes this, China could be the first to demonstrate that milestone. With the possibility of a successful proximity operation or even refueling now on the table, what comes next isn't just speculation, it's anticipation. This isn't the end of a test. It's the beginning of a new operational era in space. First, a formal announcement may be expected from China. Historically, such announcements follow successful missions, especially when technical risks are high. If Shurjin-25 has completed an on-orbit servicing operation, whether refueling or docking, China will likely confirm it once performance and safety data are reviewed. That confirmation would mark a pivotal moment not just for China, but for global space infrastructure as a whole. What's likely to follow is the expansion of orbital servicing missions. China could develop a series of satellites like Shurjin-25, purpose-built to refuel, inspect, or relocate other spacecraft. Such a fleet could support national satellites, commercial clients, or even international partners in need of extended geo-satellite support. This new capability also invites a global response and policy development. As more countries invest in proximity operations and satellite servicing, questions about regulations, transparency, and space traffic coordination will become urgent. Organizations such as the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space are already discussing frameworks for responsible behavior in orbit. Activities like these could accelerate the push for binding international guidelines. There's also a commercial layer unfolding. Companies around the world, especially in the US, Japan, and Europe, are preparing to offer on-demand orbital services. That could include not just refueling, but also component swaps, upgrades, inspection missions, or even satellite recycling. China's lead in geo-servicing could provide a first-mover advantage in what might become a multi-billion dollar industry in the coming decade. Moreover, satellite operators themselves may start designing future spacecraft to be refuelable or serviceable by default. Just like modern smartphones are built with modular repair in mind, satellites could adopt standardized ports, robotic interfaces, and accessible fuel valves to support long-term maintenance. That shift could significantly reduce the long-term cost of space missions. Lastly, there's the educational and innovation ripple effect. A successful GEO servicing mission inspires universities, engineers, and startups to rethink satellite life cycles. If Shurjin-21 and Shurjin-25 completed a refueling test in geostationary orbit, it marks a turning point in how we operate satellites. This isn't just a technical achievement, it's a shift towards space sustainability, long-term value, and smarter mission planning. With satellites now potentially serviceable in orbit, we're stepping into a future where nothing in space is truly isolated or disposable. What was once science fiction is quickly becoming reality. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.